new movement by citizens dedicated to restoring property rights by exposing and eliminating abusive, aggressive, illegal, and unconstitutional code enforcement practices. We will also be introducing a code enforcement bill of rights that has fixed these problems in other big states like Florida, Arizona, and California, where they have adopted it into their statutes. Please rate and comment on this video. Under English common law, ownership of private property has always included the right to freely use such property as the owner desires, with but two limitations. Number one, property, including land, cannot be used in a manner which constitutes a danger to the health, safety, morals, or the general welfare of the public. And, number two, private land cannot be used to interfere with the above property rights of others to use and enjoy their property. Private property or the encroachment upon the rights of another citizen's private property rights, the burden has always been on the government to prove the owner's use constituted a public nuisance requiring restriction of use in order to protect the public. Property owners and residents' private property rights are secured and protected by both the United States Constitution and the state's Constitution. Among these are the following specific unalienable rights. Number one, that all natural persons are equal before the law with the right to acquire, possess, and protect property. 14th Amendment, U.S. Constitution. Number two, that no person shall be deprived of property without due process of law. 14th Amendment, U.S. Constitution. Black's Law Dictionary, 2nd edition, defines due process as a course of legal proceedings according to those rules and principles which have been established in our systems of jurisprudence for the enforcement and protection of private rights. Number three, that the right of the people to be secure in their person, houses, against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. Fourth Amendment, U.S. Constitution. Number four, that excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed. Eighth Amendment, U.S. Constitution. Number five, that in suits at common law where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved. Seventh Amendment, U.S. Constitution. Citizens of the county have the right to the full enjoyment and peaceful use of their own private, real, and personal property. Citizens have the right to be free from harassment and arbitrary code enforcement acti activities. Code enforcement exists to protect the health, safety, and general welfare of the public from the dangers of improper use of private property. If no public danger exists, there should be no enforcement action taken. It is not the job of code enforcement to protect people from their own actions when taken on their own property. Code enforcement officials are employees of the taxpaying citizens of the county, and as such, should strive to treat citizens they come into contact with respect, dignity, and fairness. Code enforcement officials should recognize the unalienable rights of the county's property owners and residents and comply with those rights. Code enforcement should not be used as a means to enrich the county coffers. The following is the proposed Citizens Code Enforcement Bill of Rights that other states have adopted into their statutes to stop corruption and illegal activities. Number one, specified danger. In all enforcement actions, code enforcement shall identify specifically the public danger to the health, safety, or welfare caused by an alleged violation. Said alleged public danger shall be clearly stated within the served notice of the alleged violation. Number two, equal protection. No enforcement action shall be taken against a private citizen or property owner for any alleged violation or condition which can be found to exist on nearby county-owned or other pro public property. Number three, identification of violator. 
In all code enforcement activities, the alleged violator shall be specifically identified by name. The property owner is not always the alleged violator. Number four, illegal searches, right to refuse consent. Code enforcement officials do not have the right to enter upon private property for inspection or any other purpose without the advance informed consent of the citizen or property owner or illegally obtained inspection warrant based upon sworn affidavit with lawful probable cause. Code enforcement personnel shall not trespass in order to look over privacy fences. Code officials shall advise citizens that they have the right to refuse inspection requests. Number five, act prohibited by code enforcement. Code enforcement personnel shall at all times respect the constitutional rights of the citizen or property owners they serve and shall treat them with dignity and respect. 5a. Code enforcement officers shall not demonize or disparage citizens by characterizing their treasured personal property and belongings as junk, debris, or litter without specific identification and cause. Identifications shall not be arbitrary but shall be based upon a specified danger to public health, safety, and welfare. 5b. As aesthetics and appearance are subjective to arbitrary determinations, code officials shall avoid violations based upon aesthetics and appearance. 5c. Anonymous complaints lead to a greater chance of harassment and the loss of of the right of privacy and peaceful enjoyment of property. Therefore, anonymous complaints shall be rejected. 5D. Code officials shall make no representations that court cost or administrative hearing fees will be assessed against an alleged violator for simply contesting an alleged violation. Code enforcement shall make the affirmative statement that no cost or fees shall accrue absent a finding that a violation occurred. 5e. Code officials shall refrain from overreaching or piling on when issuing alleged violations. One act shall not result in multiple violations. 6. Notice of hearing. All alleged violators shall receive with the statutorily prescribed hearing notice, the name of the original complainant, a statement of the evidence obtained against them, how said evidence was obtained, and how the defendant can obtain copies of said evidence or otherwise review said evidence. Review of such evidence shall be in such a manner and time that will allow the accused to prepare a meaningful defense. This notification shall also provide a statement of the procedures to be used at hearing, a statement the accused can request a continuance in order to prepare a defense, and all other information concerning the accused fundamental due process rights. 7. Right to question the complainant. At the alleged violator's request, the hearing officer shall subpoena the person that filed the original code violation complaint. At the hearing, the violator shall have the right to question the complainant as to what perceived danger the alleged code violation posed to them personally, or the perceived danger posed to the public at large. Should this government witness fail to appear at this hearing, the case shall be dismissed without cost assessed to the alleged violator. 8. Jury Trial Hearing the Federal Constitution guarantees an accused the right to trial by jury. Any accused should be able to demand a trial by jury. 9. Excessive Fines, Forfeitures of Estate The governing body shall set definitive fines for minor code or ordinance violations in order to avoid the excessive fines that can result from daily accruing open-ended fines. No liens shall attach for minor violations. Mandatory maximum fines and liens shall accrue and attach only to violations which pose severe and eminent danger to the public health, safety, and welfare. 
The local governing body has the statutory authority to waive fines and release liens. These fine waivers and lien releases could be made upon the local body's own motion or upon petition by the violator. This video presentation is meant to illustrate the different problems that can occur from not having strict enough guidelines for code enforcement.